Welcome back to the channel. Welcome. Well, we're on a bit of a road trip, mate, aren't we? Yeah. Me and Gregorio are on a road trip to test out two of the new uh, middleweight super naked, basically. Or super, they are really sort super. Of. Super naked middleweights. Let's call them that. A new category. <laughs> We've invented a whole new category of motorcycle. That's what we do on this channel. We, we redefine boundaries. So I've got the uh, 990 Duke. I went on. The, I was lucky enough to go on the launch of this beginning of the year. Absolutely loved it. Fantastic round Spanish twisty mountain roads. But what it's like? What's it like to do a bit of a bit of a commute on? Load it up, get it in the rain, take it to Wales. We let you know. What have you got there, Greg? So I have got the 2024 Yamaha MT09. Only been out in the UK for a couple of weeks now. So new for this year is slightly different seat. It's yeah. keyless. Uh, it's now got a Brembo Stylema uh, front caliper and master cylinder. And uh, yeah, it's all rather nice actually. It's all rather tasty. All well, and in those beautiful SB colours yeah, as look well. look at it. I mean, it's so nice, yeah, isn't it? I know everyone, and everyone loves it, don't they? But yeah. it does look, it looks really yeah. cracking, doesn't it? So we've come to Wales. So if you're interested in which, it's going to be quite good this, because we'll let you know which one is best on fuel, yep. which one is the more comfortable bike, because we've got about three or 400 mile round trip on these bikes. And uh, we've had all sorts of weather and, and all sorts. So we've, Typical we've given these Welsh bikes, affair. Typical Welsh affair, yeah. So uh, if you're interested in these two machines, settle down. Get yourself a cup of tea and chop see while we enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Well, here we are. We have almost some sunshine almost some sunshine I, I don't think that's gonna last i don't think that's gonna last so here are the bikes so we're heading off to wales it's what it's about quarter past nine we're down near portsmouth south coast we're heading up off the motorways hopefully a nice twisty route we've got some good roads when we get to wales so i'm really really excited about this and we've got a couple of weapons to do it on haven't we wow well, they're gonna be good aren't they what you got there then chopsy 990 jukes this is the new the new 990 the uh, the replacement to the 890 which we both love and you actually owned haven't you both love that bike so this is improved new swing arm new headlight new styling a bit more capacity 190 122 horsepower i believe i'll put the specs on the screen but i went on the launch of this we had some amazing twisty road through spain and this was incredible so I really, yeah, this, this is a fantastic bike. It's going to be good. I've never ridden it, so obviously I'm familiar with the KTM Dukes, having owned a Super Duke and the 890R, but I haven't ridden this one at all yet. Um, but I'm on the brand new for 2024 MT09SP from Yamaha. So we did a little bit of a review of the base model MT09 2024, didn't we, about six, eight weeks ago. So I've only ridden this for probably about 10 minutes so far, and it was quite weird. I'd completely forgotten it had upgraded brakes and I thought oh the brakes feel really nice on this and then oh god of course it's got Brembo so they are already shining out as being very very good but yeah love the look of it actually paint job looks amazing looks really nice quality doesn't it yeah it does the, the fit and finish is lovely isn't it and of course you've got the Olin's rear shot with the preload adjuster as you mentioned the Stylema calipers now full suite of electronics on this for this year as well including really sophisticated navigation as well so brilliant bike and Yamaha have even chucked some luggage on it as well official Yamaha luggage on the back so uh, I'm on the old uh, dry bag the pyramid accessories dry bag on the back of the KTM but they do do a similar luggage kit for that but we just couldn't get hold of it so uh, shall we then shall we should we do it shall we do it while it's dry we're wasting dry time dry road time <laughs> let's do it <laughs> let's go here we go so it's going to be quite a few hours in the sea today so what a test Ah, oh, that's it, isn't it? We can test out which one uses the most fuel because we'll be filling them up together so we know which one's the most thirsty. We're also going to be able to test out the comfort properly. But <laughs> which one are we going to be begging to fight over tomorrow when we've got to ride home <laughs> with sore bodies? <laughs> so it's, it's going to be a, a good little test this to really put these bikes through their paces and see. And well, at the end of it, we'll let you know which one we were purchased with our own money because. The Duke is slightly higher, well, I say higher spec, it's got more power, more torque than the Yamaha. It's also a fair bit more money though. It's, it's almost 13,000 pounds, the uh, 990 Duke. And it's not even the R version, so you don't even have Stylemas, you know, you've got more budget componentry on the brakes and stuff. But it's a very well sorted motorcycle, incredibly well sorted. And it feels very much like the Super Duke. How are you finding the uh, MT? 
Yeah, well, I'm still actually just my head spinning at the thought of having a sore body tomorrow. I'm a bit worried about what you've got in store tonight, <laughs> Totty. <laughs> I might turn round, actually. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we're sharing, Ben. I'll tell you what we're double beds. Double beds. Like, right. A bit of lamb chop team bonding. <laughs> but no, in answer to your question, the seat, it, it feels nice. Um, yeah, the MT09, the seat, it's actually nice and wide. I, put it this way, I haven't really thought about it, which I think is always a good sign. But to be fair, it's only been like 15 minutes. So. You've, been on, you've been on in 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll come, we'll come back to that one about four o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> I think we should. But no, so far so good. Very upright. So that's taking me a little bit of getting used to again because it is so upright in the MT09. But uh, yeah, very pleasant. Very pleasant. Yeah, the riding position on the Duke is the same. It's quite upright, more so than the Super Duke. So you, you are more upright than the Super Duke. So it's a bit of a surprise, actually. I'm surprised because um, the 890 Duke car that I had, I would say was quite an aggressive riding position compared to the average naked. But you're saying that's quite upright on the 990. Correct. I think it's definitely a bit more upright than the 890 was. Yeah. I don't think it's as upright as the MT-09 though, but we'll, we, we'll see. Ooh. Oh, the brake. Even though this doesn't have Stylemas on, there's an incredible amount of feel and power from the from the front brake on this bike. A really nice lever feel. So it'd be quite interesting to see actually if uh, if if the if the Yamaha is considerably better on the brake feel, because this is very nice. I can tell you now, likewise, the Yamaha, the front brake feels so nice. Yeah, which is, you'd expect, it's almost, it's not over braked, but they're pretty amazing brakes for a bike that doesn't weigh that much, that's for sure. Well, what is brilliant, the KTM, is just how, the, the dynamics of the handling are really, really good. I mean, the 890R was probably one of the best handling bikes, best handling naked you could buy, wasn't it? Absolutely incredible. And what they've done with the 990 is make it a bit more stable, but it's still got that feeling that you're absolutely locked to the road. And I think this WP suspension is really good, you know, much better than what you might think. I mean, you may say, well, it hasn't got an Olin's rear, but this WP is fantastic stuff. As we know, we've owned a lot of KTMs, haven't we? We know how good it is. And you can tell that as soon as you hit some twisties on this, you're really getting that feedback, that feel and that support. Well, if we've got these sorts of roads all the way to Wales, we're in for a hell of a day. <laughs> Woo! I must say the M209 is pretty good though, mate. You look good on it. It feels good. I'm actually really enjoying myself already. It's so playful. How does it feel from sort of dynamically? Because it's quite a sort of light front end, isn't it? So, so does it feel like the front's very light? And, and how is it in the twisties? No, it, feel, it does feel very light at the front, but I've been, I've been deliberately trying to allow for that in the way that I'm riding it. But actually on the brakes, when you're going in, you know, just before you're tipping in, it actually feels quite nice at the front end, uh, better than I thought. There's not too much dive. I mean, again, I've not been riding that aggressively yet, but so time will tell. I was just going to say, it might be worth, I know that's got the, that's got the remote preload adjuster on the rear. It might be worth putting some more preload in the rear to raise the rear a little bit. That, that could really help with putting a bit more weight on the nose. Yeah, good shout. But yeah, I think we should have, a, when we stop, we'll have a little, little twill of the twiddlies. That's the beauty of having a remote stuff like that, isn't it? You can actually reach it and play with it easily. Oh, there's so much initial grunt on, with this engine. When, as soon as you open the throttle, you've got so much grunt. I say it really does, even though this is a parallel twin, you know, it's perceived as sort of your cheaper, cheaper engine configuration and it is but i think ktm this ktm parallel twin is so nice so much grunt sounds great as well feels very much like the super duke so just the question i've got then i, I don't know if you can cast your mind back but we last year did a re comparison review of the ktm 790 duke the one that's built by cf moto but let's not go there <laughs> yeah um how does that? How does the 990 compare to that? Would you say, or can you not really recall? Yeah, that's a. That's a. That's a it feels very, very similar. Very, very similar dynamically, but with more, more initial grunt, more grunt than the seven, which is what you'd expect. But it, but the riding position was quite aggressive on the eight on the 790, wasn't it? It was, and it's. I don't think it's as. You, you see what you think, but I don't think it's as aggressive as the as the 790. I don't. I, I seem to have all my weight on my arse, I don't seem to have anything on the bars. And I'm sure you had 
five, ten percent of your weight on the on the bars with the with the 790. The seat is cantered forward slightly, so you've definitely you've, you, you can tell the rear is quite high, which it always was on the 790. But it's just the bar position. You don't have any weight on the bars. The bars are quite close to you, but I think it's it's a moderate position apart from where the bars are placed. Right, let's have a little swap ski then. Let's have a little swap ski while it's dry. I know we're only 20 minutes into the sort of review and the trip, but my verdict is, it's bloody brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> bloody, bloody brilliant. It is, I love it. Oh, looks good, right. mate. Oh, it looks definitely good. feels super duke with the dash right there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's it, the dash is right in front of you, isn't it? Oh, it's a funny little twisty thing here. Oh, nice. Uh, it is. It is. It is a bit more upright than the previous one, but I think this is still. This is more forward than the MT09. Just a. Just a. Just. Just a tad. It is. Oh, the gear change and the quick shift is much smoother on the Yamaha. Much smoother. Power delivery. It's not. It's not quite as punchy as, as the KTM when you initially go on the throttle. But it's very smooth. Yeah, I think the KTM's much more, a bit more aggressive, more aggressive on the, uh, not in a bad, not necessarily in a bad way, just, just more aggressive on the, the delivery. And I've got it in, it's in street mode, so that it that can go more aggressive than that if you want. I think the KTM feels, it, it, I don't know that it is, but just from a riding perspective, it feels shorter because the dash is right there, and then there's nothing over the front. It feels like, you know, you, you don't really see much bike when you're riding it, to be honest. It's got a real sort of quality feel to the Yamaha, like the, it's so easy to ride and everything just feels really good quality and you're right, those brakes are good aren't they? There's quite a lot of power there, I think, I don't know if there's as much feel as what's on the KTM though. Oh no, I, I'm going to have to argue. I think, I think, <laughs> the, I, think the, I, know, I think the front brake, there's, there's nothing wrong with the KTMs, but I think the, uh, the Yamaha brakes better. Or, or I prefer it. I think one thing that I would say, even in the first few minutes of swapping and having never ridden the 990, um, it doesn't feel, and this is just a consideration on price, you buy the MT09 SP and everything you see is what you get, and there's no, that's it. All the electronics are there. This doesn't feel like it's worth extra money, I wouldn't say. It's not to say it's worse, but you know, it's like, well, why is, it, why is it more? They should be almost identically priced, I think. It's not obviously apparent where your extra money's gone, is it? But that, that's the thing. And of course, the electronics are comparable. You've both got separated wheelie control and traction control. You've both got you know adjustable levels of wheelie control. That's low, medium, high. So from an electronics point of view, they're very, very similar. But of course, on the KTM, you've got to pay another 800 pound to unlock all of that. And standard for your 13,000, you don't even get the cruise control. That's part of the tech pack as well. So the cruise control is even unlockable, whereas all of that is completely completely included in your £11,800 on the MT09 SP. I must admit, that sort of dynamically though, the MT09, I think that rear shot makes a difference to the, to, the, to how it performed. On the, on the standard MT09, it was definitely the... You know, it just felt like the dynamics were just all built for doing wheelies and if you put it for a set of twisties it wasn't that great dynamically but I think that extra support from Odin's rear shock has actually made it much more dynamic and handles much better the high speed corners and the twisties I think. So we stopped again, we're just north of uh, sort of Stockbridge, we're heading towards sort of Bristol way, we're cutting across that way just to keep the roads nice and Nice and quiet. We've still got no rain yet, but the clouds are getting heavier. Don't jinx it! Please don't jinx <laughs> it. Touch wood, touch wood. <laughs> How are you finding the... Uh, you've been, Greg's just been thrashing this old girl. I have been thrashing it, and there were some good roads then. It's, it's really impressive, the KTM. It's so stable. And uh, yeah, and it's got it's got plenty of punch. It really has. It's it, and it, it it quite likes. Although the the bottom end of the mid range is beautiful, loads of power and loads of torque, but it likes the thrashing as well. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's, it does. <laughs> <laughs> likes to be spanked. <laughs> no, it's good. It's impressive. It is impressive. Had a couple of false neutrals, but it's very KTM like. But actually, I think what I've realised 
you get back into it. You've got to be quite, you've got to be very direct with that throttle. Uh, sorry, not with the throttle, with the, with the gear lever. Yeah, yeah, very, very positive. Whereas you can be a little bit lazier, I think, on the Yamaha. Concept. The quick shift of lipper is really good on the M two nine. Really smooth. Any speed, I think that's a little bit more aggressive feeling. Isn't it, it is aggressive, but it, it, it is working fine. I, I'm happy with it. But but I had to recalibrate my mind. Like, oh yeah, this is a KTM. You have to yeah, ride yeah, them slightly differently. Yeah. But it's definitely easier to live with the gearbox on the Yamaha. I'd say. I've put some extra preload on the on the rear only just to sort of give a bit more support at the back and put a bit more weight forward and actually we've had some sort of quite fast twisty bumpy roads we're a bit worried because this doesn't come with the steering damper but it seems really locked to the road much more so than the standard mt09 i think that that rear Odin to just giving out that extra bit of support which uh, i think it was lacking a bit on the standard one but anyway should we do it let's swap back let me get back on the uh, ktm yeah jumping back on the ktm it, it it does feel a bit more aggressive, slightly more aggressive feeling. The, the, the suspension feels a bit firmer. Perhaps a little bit more support on like the faster twisties, perhaps. Well, they're both, both superb, really. We were just saying off camera, weren't we, that the sort of power delivery of this is sort of in between what was the old 890 and the Super Duke. You've definitely got more grunt. And... You know, I sort of said it when I did the launch on this, but it's almost like, do you need to, after riding this on the road, do you need the Super Duke? Because this delivers so much grunt. And it feels just like a V-twin, doesn't it? <laughs> hey! Is it raining? I think it might be raining, mate. Have I just jinxed it by saying it hasn't rained yet? <laughs> you, you definitely sat further, more upright on the MT-09, and there is even less weight over the front. Yeah. It's shorter, the KTM, isn't it? So you've got more weight over the front because it seems shorter at the front. You're, you're more towards the front of the bike, aren't you? So I think you have definitely got a bit more weight over the front wheel than what you have on the uh, MT-09. We've been in the saddle now, what, a good a good hour and hour and 15, I'd say. And they're, they're both very comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, really comfortable. Admittedly, no motorways whatsoever, which definitely helps because you were moving around a lot, but... Yeah, so far so good. And I think fun factor for both of them, they're, they're right up there, aren't they? It's so much fun. It's unbelievable. I fancy that the uh, the KTM seat could be a little bit harder, maybe a tiny little bit. And like I say, because you're locked in a bit because of my bag. It's it not is, helping, is it? No, it's not helping from a sort of space point of view, but oh, bloody weather, bloody weather. Weather, what's happening? We're not even in Wales and it's raining. Not even in Wales. Well, we've hit a bit of weather, unfortunately. Caught up with this. We're not in Wales yet. We're just coming onto the M4, and then we're going to cross the, the seven, I think. But we're just fueling up. So, thirty-nine forty-seven liters to fill up the KTM. But as we're using the same pump, we will have to do some maths. <laughs> Stay. Slight, slightly thirsty in the KTM. Interesting. What's what's it? Point eight of a litre more than the KTM. That's interesting. Well, we are in Wales. We made it. We stopped at uh, the Baffle House, which is quite cool, actually recommended to me by R1 Liz. But uh, we're here. We're going to stop a bit of lunch. Greg's got squelchy shoes. <laughs> So I think that this weather, this weather is just in for the day now. It's uh, typical, but it looks pretty decent in here, I have to say. Great weather for ducks. We are five miles away from where we're staying tonight. Uh, it's been really, really heavy rain since, since we left lunch. Since we left our lovely little lunch spot. It's, it's sort of dried out a bit, isn't it? As you can see, it's actually pretty dry here now. So we didn't record, but then we had a bit of dry spot. Nice bit of ro roads, but uh, bikes are looking absolutely minging. But we're going to stop at the Tesco's, co-op even, and uh, get some supplies for tonight. A few more condoms, that sort of stuff. <laughs> 
the evening meal, the Fennin Fack Griffin. It's a little bit pricey and a bit fancy for us, maybe. Beer's good though, beer's good though. Local cider, ooh. It is dry. Look at that view. Gorgeous. Home private driveway. <laughs> it's got a half mile long private driveway to this place. I can see some wheelies coming on. Well, we've had a nice bit of brekkie. Uh, lovely place we stayed in. Lovely place. I'll put a link. It's uh, Airbnb, but it's a bed and breakfast. Uh, good night's sleep, lovely room. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to stay. Sort of mid Wales, this is very nice. Even had like private parking for the bikes. But look, look at the state of them. Look at the state. Look at the state of the Duke. <laughs> uh, I thought we'd been off roading on them. Looks like we've been off roading on them. But uh, yeah, but we've got a dry day, thankfully. The sun, I think, will be coming out. The rain has dissipated and it's time to have some proper fun on these beasts. Bring it on. Admiring how well he's installed the L plate. <laughs> Actually <laughs> over the number plate. Here we go. Look at these roads. Oh, it's like heaven, isn't it? This is glorious. So accelerated in fifth. Yeah, bang it down. It works, is it? Yeah, it works, yeah. What's that in the road behind you? Oh, that's right, it's your gearbox. <laughs> oh, I love the pull on this thing though, look at it. So instant. <laughs> Sorry, that was accidental. As soon as we stop, what you're going to be thinking about is smashing that burger, mate. Like all the thoughts of testing the steering lock are going to go out the window. <laughs> stop saying that. It sounds like you're going to make love to it. <laughs> you are. With your, with your mouth. How many miles to our luncheon destination? Uh, to you smashing your burger? Stop saying that. <laughs> oh, that's <is> brilliant. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I'm just waiting for slow boy. <laughs> <laughs> 